seven. Day seven. Day seven of the 30 days of Photoshop. Welcome. My name's Kevin Aronson from Hampshire School of Photography. And we begin a whole session now on selections because you'll need them as a photographer. Let's get cracking. Selections. Go on. Go for it. So this is an introduction to working with selections, which are really important to you as a photographer. You may want to select something to get rid of it, to move it somewhere else in the image or to change its appearance. So getting your head around and understanding all your options with selections. Yeah, it's it's important. Today, we're just going to look at two types of selections, the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. These bottom two aren't really for photographers. They're really used by web designers. So let's click on rectangular marquee tool and let's create a rectangular marquee. And there's one there. A rectangular marquee, that's all there is to it. You can deselect it by pressing command or control D for deselect and it goes. And then it goes back again, draw another one. These things, these moving animated dotted lines, they're called marching ants. And it's a term pretty well used now around the planet to describe them because I guess they look if you really use your imagination and squint with one eye they look like an army of ants moving one behind another in in, in straight line in formation anyway so there they are and to deselect them is command or control D draw another one another selection let's draw a selection around the red kite and um, this image by the way I've been working on to use as part of uh, a promotion to publicize the photography and Photoshop editing workshops at our training center in Fleet in Hampshire. Um, and it just seemed that as this was on my screen, we'd work with it. It's a nice image. Although I took this image, I took, I took that bird, oh gosh, about 12, 13 years ago, something like that, with a very old Canon 40D and a 400 millimeter lens. Um, Right, which is when the red kite was still relatively small in number and was still very much endangered. But of course, they're not really endangered anymore. They've been a success story. So I put a, I built a, a, a marquee selection around the bird. Um, you've got some little boxes up here, which you ought to look at. There's some icons. So the first one is the one I'm currently clicked on, which is new selection. And that's the one you click on when you make a new selection. The next one is add to a selection. The next one is about taking away from a selection. And the last one is about where, in, where sections intersect. Let's go to the first one, add to selection. Now, if I were to create a selection around the words, the art, and it crossed over and touched the existing selection of the bird, the two become one. That is now one single selection. Do that again if I want to include the words of photography. So long as it touches the other selection, it'll join in with them. And you can do this as many times as you like in as many shapes as you like. Okay. The next one, which is subtract from, click on that. And now every time you build a selection, it takes away from any existing selection. So I can get rid of something. It's like an eraser tool for selections. Well, cool. Let's just do that. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one, that's really weird. This only creates a selection where two or more selections intersect. So if I drew a selection here of the words, the art of, and I drew it across the existing selection, it would only keep the element where the two selections touch each other, like this. Or like this. Never ever used it. In 11 years, 12 years, never ever used it, ever. But these two, add to and take from, are used on a daily basis. Let's deselect those with Command or Control D. Um, now, the whole process of selecting, let's, let's pick the circular one because it's elliptical because it, it demonstrates better here. If I want to select, let's zoom in on his face. Um, move across a bit. 
If I wanted to make a selection of his face, you'd think I'd just click on his eye and draw there. Ah. No, it goes off to the side and I've got some other things going on here. I really want a circle rather than elliptoid or ellipsoid or whatever they're called. Um, so, how do we do this? First of all, if you click on something and you drag it, it's not going to be a one by one proportion restraint. In other words, you can have long and thin, tall and thin, squatty and fat, and it's the same with the rectangle. You can have long rectangle, short rectangle, but if you want a square or a perfect rect a perfect circle where the the proportions are constrained on a one by one format, then you've got to hold down the shift key. When you do that, it creates a perfect circle. Let's do another one. There you go. Perfect circle. Perfect circle. So if I want to put a, a circle over that bird's eye, you'd think I just click on the eye, hit the shift key, but now it does it off to the side. So how do we get it to stay central on the thing we click on? We need another key. Click on the eye, and this time I hold down the Alt key, or the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and I'm also going to hit the Shift key down as well, and the two buttons are close to each other, the Alt and the Shift, and now as I drag out, look at that. Perfect. Oh, I let go too soon, we'll do that again. Click on his eye, Alt or Option, and Shift, bring it out from there, and then let go of the keyboard. That's excellent. Um, if I want to, I can move that selection to the right, to the left, up and down. I'm using the arrow keys. If I hold the shift key down, it moves quicker. If I didn't have that option, I'd go nuts waiting for the slow thing to do. So I'm going to position it about there. Kind of like that. OK. If I hit delete now, now backspace, it deletes the selection. No good to me at all. Let's undo that. Command or Control Z. So what I want now is a way to delete everything else apart from my selection. So what I have to do is actually change the selection from the face and the body of the bird to everything else. And you do that by holding down the Command or Control on the PC. Command, Shift and I, I for invert. So command or control, shift I inverts a selection. In fact, let me zoom out so you can see what happens when I do this. Uh, so I'm pressing command, shift I. And now what's happened now is everything else in the image apart from that circled area has been selected. So everything outside of that circle has been selected and the contents within that circle is no longer selected. How do I know? Watch what happens when I press backspace or delete. See? Because we had inverted the selection. If I do it again, Command Shift I for invert, now I'm back to just that the bird's face. You don't have to do it with those keyboard commands. If you go to select inverse, there it is. And there's the keyboard shortcut there. So inverse there does the same thing. You can see now the whole of the image has got marching ants around the outside. If I do my backspace or delete, boom, undo to get there. And Command D2 or Control D to deselect. And then finally, um, once you've selected something, let's select something. Whoops. Let's say we want. I just don't want that. Let's go uh, click on the eye, Alt, Shift, and do that. And let's say I actually want that part of the bird to be larger. I can control the size of my selection once it's been selected. Once the marching ants are in place, I can now bring up the transform controls. And you do that with Command or Control T for transform. Once I hit those buttons, Command or Control T. There we go. I've now got transfer, transform handles in all four corners and also on the sides. Uh, that means if I hold the shift key down and grab one of these corners, I can make that picture bigger. I can move it around and I can make it bigger. 
How cool is that? I can even rotate it. As I move towards the corners, the icon changes to a kind of 90 degree double arrow thing. Where is it? There it is. So I could do that. That's cool, isn't it? Deselect. Wicked. I'd probably want to do something about that thing there. The, the wing. But you get the idea. Let's just undo all of that. So that was selections. That was a bit more interesting than you expected, I hope. Tomorrow we move on. And I'm looking forward to it. If you're not watching this in the blog, but maybe on YouTube or on Vimeo, then do please check out the blog for the full 30 days of Photoshop. And um, you can find us at phototeacher.blog. And if you want to check out on our courses, which we're running in, 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 in a proper physical courses in the classroom at our training centre in Fleet in Hampshire, then check out the website HSP, gohsp.com nearly forgot my own website address there gohsp.com and that is it I'm going now thanks for watching another episode of 30 days of photoshop see you tomorrow have a great day bye